Hey guys, Cody with Princess Craft RV, and today we're gonna go through the 2020 Tax Outdoors Mantis trailer. So come along and let's check this thing out. Starting just up front here, we're gonna go over the basics of getting this thing hooked up to your tow vehicle. All right, to start off, we're gonna have our coupler here. We're gonna ride on a two inch ball and uh, uh, uncouple this thing. You're just gonna lift up on this lever and pull up and back, and that's gonna release that ball from your tow vehicle. And to latch it on is just gonna be the opposite. Drop it down onto the ball, pick up, push forward. Make sure this ear right here, there's one on each side, falls down into that slot all the way. And that's gonna ensure that you are coupled onto the ball correctly. To finish our hookup, we're gonna have a couple other things, our safety chains here. They're gonna crisscross and then connect to the receiver hitch on the tow vehicle. And we're gonna have our standard seven-way trailer plug connection, which is gonna run all your brakes, lights, and turn signals, anything like that on the trailer. And when you plug this thing in, you'll see this little ear here on the top. That's gonna face the lid, which should be the cover of your seven way and help lock that in. And when it's not in use, this thing is gonna store right here on the A-frame. Moving over to this side, the last thing that's gonna hook up onto your tow vehicle is gonna be your breakaway cable. This cable hooks into this little box and then hooks onto your tow vehicle. And if for some reason you were to get unhooked, this is gonna yank out of this box and engage the brakes on the trailer. It is a safety device. Cool replacement for this cable, cause these are generally too long and drag to ground, is a zip cord. It makes a real quick and easy hookup for you. And it's an excellent add-on. Um, also right here, while we're looking at that, we've got some trailer information, VIN, weights, all that good stuff, tire information here on the trailer. Do stick to these. It's got your tire pressure, tire size, all that kind of good stuff. Moving back from there, we've got your auto brake, brake controller. This is a trailer mounted brake control. Check it out online. It's got a lot of good information about how to set it and how to use it. Um, auto brake, A-U-T-O-W. Moving up from there to finish out the tongue, we've got your propane cylinders underneath this cover. So let's take a look at those. By removing this cover, there's just a bungee, bungee strap underneath that you're gonna release. That's gonna allow you to lift the cover off. Now you don't have to remove the cover if you're not servicing the cylinders. Uh, you can just flip the lid up and I'll show you how to do that in a second to get in and turn the cylinders on and off. But to remove a cylinder, very simple process, make sure your cylinder is turned off, whichever one it is you're gonna use or remove. Disconnect the gas line from it. Undo your wing nut. Go ahead and remove your regulator and just let it lay out of the way so you can get your crossbar out. Tip your cylinder out and remove your cylinder. Okay, to reinstall is just gonna be the opposite. Set your cylinder back up there. Reinstall the crossbar. Set your regulator back on there and put your wing nut back on. Now when you tighten this down, it doesn't need to be overly tight. Just snug it up, okay? Hook your gas line back to whichever cylinder you disconnected. It may be both, may just be one. And that's how you remove your cylinders. Now to choose your cylinder, this is called an auto changeover regulator, which means if you have both of these cylinders turned on and your selector valve to a primary cylinder, when that cylinder goes low, it's gonna automatically start pulling out of the other cylinder, but it will be at a reduced BTU rating. So the recommendation is to leave one cylinder off, keep one cylinder on. This is gonna be your supply lever, which is gonna choose whichever cylinder is your supply cylinder. Uh, so right now we're pointing to this one. If we wanted to use this one, it would be facing this way. And when this one goes empty, all we're gonna do is turn this little lever, turn the other one on, and we'll be good to go. When you're done in there, all you gotta do is put your cover back on, reinstall your bungee. If you need to service your cylinders just from the top, if you want to uh, just turn them on and off, undo your little lock nuts here, Flip this little lid up and you have access to your cylinder valves. When you get ready to travel, do make sure that you have these snug. These lids have been known to pop open and they disappear somewhere along the road. 
That finishes up the tongue. So over here on the off door side of the trailer, we've got a few things going on, but to start, we've got our stabilizers. There's four of these on the trailer, front and rear, two in the front, two in the back. Now these are just stabilizer jacks. They crank down right here with a, what we call a spline drive crank. And you're just gonna run that down to the ground and snug it up. Tongue jack is used for front to rear leveling. And then you would put something under the tires to do side to side leveling. Just remember your stabilizers are not to lift the trailer. They are only for stabilization. Moving back from there is gonna be access to our cassette toilet. To get into this, we're just gonna pull these two little levers out right here. And we're gonna rotate these knobs. You can do 90 degrees, 180 degrees. And if it's locked, unlock it with the key. Inside, we're gonna find access to our cassette toilet. Uh, pretty cool little thing. Just gotta fill it up with water. To fill it up, we're just gonna remove this cap. And right in here is you're gonna put your water hose. You don't wanna pull it, put it on full blast because these do slow, uh, slowly fill. So don't put it on full blast. And watch your level gauge right here. This side tube is gonna fill up and that'll tell you when you're full and when you need to add water. After you get it full, put your cap back on and store your neck away. When your um, cassette gets full, to remove it, all you're gonna do is pull up on this lever right here, which allows you to pull the cassette from the trailer. Now, to drain this cassette, all you're gonna do is turn your spout neck out, take the drain cap off, and this can be dumped into a toilet or into the sewer clean out, wherever it is that you need to dump it. This little button on the back side is a air release. So that way, uh, when you're dumping it, you don't get that gurgle. Like if you turn a gallon of water or something completely upside down, it wants to suck in on itself. So you would just push the button, turn it up and drain it. Now to clean it out, you're gonna open this, this take this off, and then you're gonna have a little turn under here. And that's just gonna open your blade valve up that's inside the toilet and allow you to spray clean this out with a water hose, uh, preferably one that you don't use for fresh water service. And when you're done, close that, reinstall your cover, reinstall your cap, and another cool thing is this does have a little handle here, so if it's full, you don't have to carry it all the way to campground facilities or something like that. You can kind of dolly it, if you will. And to put it away, oh, before I put it away, inside here, right, right here, you'll find a fuse. This fuse runs the pump for the uh, toilet. And if for some reason the pump's not working, start there, check that fuse. All you're gonna do is slide this cassette right back in all the way in until that lever locks in place and you can't pull it out. And that's how you handle the cassette. Moving over from there, we've got your plumbing vent. This is for your sink vent. Keeps your uh, drain from gurgling when the water's going down it. Uh, right down from there, we've got your Truma exhaust. Your Truma is a gas operated water heater and furnace. Um, anytime you're using the water heater or the furnace, your uh, exhaust gases are gonna come out of here. So this does get hot, cautious, and don't burn yourself. Underneath the trailer, we're gonna find your gray water drain. This is gonna be how we drain your sink and shower water. All you're gonna do is pull this valve out right here on the side, and that's gonna drain out. It is recommended that this is connected to a drain hose and run either to the uh, park dump or into a collection tote of some sort. Moving back up the wall behind this black cover is gonna be our outside shower. Real quick and easy hookup. This is a quick disconnect here. All you're gonna do is push this collar back here. It's kinda of like hooking up an air hose if you've ever done that. Push that collar back, push that in until it locks in. Now a good key point on this is make sure that you hook this up before you turn the water on. Cause once you turn the water on, that pressure comes to that valve on the backside in there. It can make it a little more difficult to hook this up. Once you're hooked up, it operates just like anything else with water, hot and cold water. And you have your garden shower that has multi sprays and stuff like that on it. When you're done using it, turn it off, drain the water out of it and to release it, push that collar in and it pops off. 
when you get ready to store these, these do hold quite a bit of water. So I recommend holding them up, open the valve on the sprayer and let all the water drain out. That way it's not draining into your trailer as you're moving around the country and joining your mantis. Moving over from there, you're gonna see our uh, potable water hookup. This is gonna be our city water hookup, which is basically where you're gonna hook your water hose if you have uh, water capabilities through a water hose. 125 PSI, uh, PSI max, we recommend, and most manufacturers recommend somewhere between 50 and 60. Everything has to be tested to at least 100 PSI. So if you ran full park pressure, not a problem, but I do recommend the use of a regulator for hose protection as well as water filters, anything else. Uh, moving over from there, we've got your 30 amp uh, power connection. Really easy hookup here. We've got your three prongs inside the, the plug here and one of them is an L shape. You're gonna match it up with the L shape inside the one on the trailer. Push it on, turn slightly to the right, and then use the lock ring to snug it down. Just next to that, you'll find a, <clears throat> sorry, my throat's getting dry. <coughs> right next to that, you'll find a solar plug, a little two prong. Uh, if you look around, you'll see that this is probably uh, labeled as a ZAMP plug. Not necessarily true. Most manufacturers do provide or have the option to receive a plug like this. Any portable solar panel, any portable solar panel can be hooked up to this. And what that's going to do is take the sun's energy and throw it into your battery to help recharge. So while you're dry camping, you can extend that time before you need to find a power source such as a generator or shore power. Just above that, this big black shield here, this is going to protect our air conditioner that's coming through the wall here. Don't cover this or anything like that, especially in use of the air conditioner. You will cause issues with your air conditioner. Just below that, we're going to find another vent. This is going to be the vent for your uh, gray tank. I'm sorry, this is going to be the vent for your battery. Uh, just allows venting into the battery box that's mounted inside. Just next to that is going to be our potable water tank fill. Uh, so if you want to go dry camping or have access to water along the road, you're just going to put your water hose in here, fill it up till it gushes back out of you, or there's a little vent up at the top. It'll come out of there. Once that's done, tank's full, good to go. Uh, on the fender here, you will see a check wheel lugs sticker. Do keep up with that. Uh, it's recommended 100 foot pounds on your torque. Uh, so they have a mile, mileage recommendation. And then here at Princess Craft, we always recommend before every trip that you take that you check the lug, uh, lug torque on each of your lug nuts on both sides before you hit the road. Just underneath, way back here, kind of in the middle of the trailer, this gray valve right here is going to be your freshwater tank drain. So this is your freshwater tank when you're going to be storing the trailer or you're going to not want to carry excess weight with you, drain that out. Just open the valve, drains out. That pretty much covers our off door side of the trailer, so let's check out the back. So around the back here, not a hot, whole lot going on, but we do have our roof access ladder with our ladder rungs and then a handle here to hang on to, which gives you nice, easy access to the top of the Mantis. But up here, you'll find a Thule roof rack, which you can strap some stuff to. Cool addition that some people are putting on these. They make about a two person uh, rooftop tent that you can put on here. It's a great add to get a couple extra people. Getting into your rear door, uh, very simple, just a latch. This is gonna uh, operate just like the entry door uh, with a paddle lock and a deadbolt. All you're gonna do is pull out and this is gonna open up. Now this is does have struts on it, so do watch yourself when you open it. They are pretty heavy duty. You don't wanna not be paying attention and have it hit you. So just pay attention to what you're doing. And spare tire. Crank handle is going to go right through this hole right here and it's going to crank down just like a spare tire on your vehicle would crank down and you're going to use the uh, crank that comes for the stabilizers. Just next to that we're going to mount up your license plate and your license plate light. That pretty much takes care of the rear. Uh, one last cool thing I did forget on the rear, this corner right here, it's a bottle opener for your uh, pop top bottles. So kind of cool there. All right. Moving on to the door side of the Mantis. Uh, everything's on kind of on the other side, so this side's pretty blank. Uh, we do have another sticker here to remind to check your wheel lugs. 
And we have a 12 volt accessory port here that you can uh, pull your refrigerator from the inside to the outside, plug it in, keep it cold, things like that going on. Uh, your entry step, very easy to uh, store and put into use. Just pick up on it and push it in. That's gonna be stored for transport. To use it, pick it up, pull it out, and that's it for the step. And last but not least is gonna be our door holdback. You can see the two pieces here. To use that, all you're gonna do is open the door and push it in and that's gonna hold your door open. And to release it, just pull the door and shut it. A Couple other things on this side, we've got your ARB awning. Uh, it's a pretty typical bag awning. Check it out online if you have any questions, if you do have anything else, or you can give us a call. And we have a pinch point warning sticker here. This is to keep you keep your fingers out of the way of this giant hinge mechanism that they use on your Mantis roof. And uh, that pretty much covers the outside of our Mantis. Let's check out the inside. All right, guys, here we are inside your 2020 Mantis. And let's go over some of the operations on the inside of this thing. Just inside the door, you're going to find most of your light switches. Um, and that, you know, Tax has kind of made up their own little uh, system for lights. We've got the light outside the house, which is going to be our patio light, which is going to be the first one. This one's going to kind of be like our light under the house, if you will. So this is going to be this red light that's right here at the entry door, as well as your step light. This one's going to kind of symbolize like the light under the roof. So this is going to be your ceiling light. And this last one is um, your light for your um, couch area up here, your bedding area. Other two things we got up here, we've got a uh, USB port. Uh, pretty much everybody knows what that's for these days. And we've got our 12 volt accessory port that you can plug in a USB charger or any other type of 12 volt accessory item. And just below that, you'll see all of our fuses. Okay can't I get that out there we go uh, so this is just a standard glass fuse it just pulls out of this little housing you can find these pretty much anywhere for uh, purchase if you do end up blowing one just get the same fuse and they just install that way so moving up here to the front we've got your couch slash bunk area pretty multi-purpose area pretty cool the way they do this um, if you want to make it into bunks you're just gonna pick the back up and then there's a strap on each side that's going to clip into a carabiner and that's going to keep it in your bunk position. You can see here that there is a storage uh, net that can rotate down. It can go up this way and clip up here and be used as a storage for whoever's staying up top um, or maybe even to keep a small child from rolling out. And it just stores underneath here by some Velcro and that's that and then if you want some extra storage space the bottom one tips up and you've got another strap and carabiner that clips to the front wall and that's going to hold this in place now your bunk has a 185 pound limit so do not exceed the 185 pounds uh, sorry for most of us adult men we're probably over that uh, but you get you a nice uh, storage area here that you can put quite a bit of stuff a little cubby on each side and we have a light over here for the bunk that is just a push button operation that apparently doesn't work. That's awesome. Okay, we'll have to cut that out. <laughs> and when if you just want to put this back into a couch, just let the bottom back down and you've got your couch. All right, moving over here, we've got your uh, bathroom, if you will. All you're going to do is take this uh, lid, tip it up, and lock that in place kind of there so it doesn't fall on you. It doesn't really lock in place, but you can lean it against that. Inside this little pouch here, you're going to find your shower curtain. And to attach your shower curtain, you're going to clip it into the four carabiners hanging from the roof. And then there's, some, there's four snaps along the, uh, the shower area here so we can keep all the water inside. Other than that, to use your shower, it's just like hot and cold. Mix it up however you want it. Just remember, you are limited on the amount of hot water that you get through these units because of the limited size and space that we have. So you have a flow control right here on the shower head. All you're going to do is rotate this knob, and that's going to 
either reduce the flow or you can shut it off almost completely and kind of do a uh, quick soap up and then rinse off. To use the toilet, very simple operation. Blue button here is gonna add water to the bowl. Once you get some water in the bowl, do your business. When you're done, pull the lever. Everything's gonna flush down. If you need to use more water, go for it. Get it all flushed down and then close it. That pretty much takes care of your bathroom. When you get ready to need the extra space or just wanna cover everything up, just put your lid back down and that takes care of that. Moving over to our, um, what is this called? Sink. Sink. Stove. It's galley Sink. area. Galley. All right, moving over to our galley area, we've got our Dometic two burner cooktop with a sink all integrated into one. Cool space saving unit. A uh, Couple things with the uh, faucet, the head has to be down and the lever both have to be down for travel position in order for the lid to close. This is a glass top lid. Also make sure your burners are cooled off before you put them down for any kind of travel. Uh, to use your water on this, this lever right here is gonna work in two ways. It's gonna work in and out this way and back and forth this way. This is gonna be your water flow this way and temperature is gonna be back and forth this way. If you open it up, you'll see the blue arrow and the red arrow. To use your two burner cooktop, all you're gonna do is choose whichever one you want or both. Turn the knob to light, push it in, and then push your little striker here until you get the flame to come on. Once it's burning, give it about another five to 10 seconds of holding the button down and then release and then the flame will sustain on its own. When you're done cooking, turn it off. Let it cool once again before you put your glass cooktop down so that way we don't end up with any shattering or anything due to overheating or anything like that. Behind the, behind the galley, we've got some uh, storage bins for, I mean, whatever you can think of putting back there. We also have some owner's manuals, a uh, little bit of chemical for the toilet, and in this bag is gonna be some steaks um, and some rope for your ARB awning. Just next to that, we've got your <clears throat> GFCI outlet. So this outlet is um, testable and resettable. This is also gonna control other 110 outlets that you may have access to in the trailer. It, it, when the red light's on, that means this thing's not working and neither will anything else. So make sure the red light is off on this one. Just above that, we've got a 12 volt, another 12 volt accessory port that you can plug just about anything into. And just below, above that, you'll see our voltage DC meter, 13.6 volts, somewhere between 13.4 and 13.7 is gonna be completely normal while we're plugged into shore power. When you unplug from shore power, that is going to drop off to nominal battery voltage, which is probably going to be somewhere around 12.5 to 12.7. That is completely normal. Uh, last but not least, up here on top of the galley, we've got our air conditioner. Now, this thing does come with a remote control, LG. Pretty self-explanatory power, temp, fan, timer, and mode. Now, if you look at the control panel on board, you'll see if we turn our power on, we've got a mode button over here and we've got a few different modes. We've got cool, which is just basic cooling. We've got fan only. We've got dry, which is gonna be like a dehumidifier. And then we've got energy saver. That's just gonna use less power. It's still gonna cool, but use less power. Above that, we've got our temperature settings, timer, fan speed. So your fan speeds, F1 through F3. F3 is gonna be your fastest. F1 is gonna be your slowest. Um, other than that, you can adjust your louvers a little bit here on the face of it to help kind of angle your airflow. Just below everything on the galley, we've got a few more things over here. Uh, your storage bins are all held in with uh, bungee cords. And they just pull out and they are baskets and you can store whatever you would need to store in there. And they just hold back in with the bungee cord. Uh, right here, we've got a control panel again with a few more switches starting from the left, we've got a um, water pump. So you can kind of see that's like a water drop there. So this is gonna be water pump. Next to that, we've got your, um, it's like a pot. So this is gonna be for your light um, at the top uh, for the galley. And then uh, just next to that one, we've got another light underneath the roof. So this is gonna be the light for your dinette area. You can see the light operating there. Uh, below that, we've got some fuses that correspond to their uh, items. And we have a room temperature sensor, which corresponds to the 
Truma system. Uh, now the Truma's got a lot of information on it, probably more than I could cover um, on how to use it in this video. So I would recommend uh, looking up the Truma operations and reading your owner's manual um, online if you have access to it. Now this does say Truma iNet Ready. This is a wireless option to allow you to control through your cell phone. It is not available in the US yet, but I do believe it will be coming. To finish out our galley side, we have a few things along the bottom here. Uh, behind this one is gonna be your battery compartment. There is a single battery in there right now. There is room for two, so if you did decide you needed to add another battery, you can, or you can upgrade to an AGM or a lithium type battery to extend your uh, camping stays without the ac needed access to 110 power. Next to that, we've got our WFCO power converter and di power distribution panel. In here, we're gonna have all our 110 breakers and we've got our 12 volt fuses. These are just like automotive car fuses and these are just like 110 house breakers. All operates the same. This compartment here is gonna be access to the Truma system for servicing. And this one here is gonna be for access to any plumbing underneath the shower that may need to be serviced. That pretty much covers our galley side. Let's finish up over here on the door side. Just a couple other things on this side to talk about. Uh, we've also got some more storage bins over here that operate just like the ones under the galley. And this compartment right here is for 12 volt wiring access. So not a whole lot in there, not a storage compartment. Uh, your unit does come with a screen door for the entry door. This just Velcros up. You'll see that there's some corresponding Velcro strips along the entry door. That just Velcros in and gives you a uh, screen door so you can really open this thing up and, and get some fresh air in. Uh, we provide to the trailer a 10 foot fresh water hose a water pressure regulator and a 30 to 15 amp power adapter that allows you to plug into a standard 15 amp home outlet to uh, kind of get the trailer ready to go. Uh, moving over, the uh, last thing that we kind of have in the kitchen area, if you will, is going to be your Dometic cooler. 12 volt operation. Very easy to use. You can store however you'd like in there. And on the side over here is gonna be our power controls. We've got power set and then a plus and minus. Power on, power off, just push and hold the button. If you'd like to change your temperature, push the set button and then choose your temperature and let it be. There are other settings in there that you can read about on your owner's manual. And if you'd like to remove this thing, it is just strapped in here on the handles. Like I said, you can take it outside and plug it in for 12 volt power outside. Kind of a lot of different options with these. They're really versatile and pretty cool units. Uh, so let's finish up back here in the back. This is going to be your uh, kind of your main bed area as well as your dinette. So there's a whole lot going on here. Uh, it's kind of like a puzzle, if you will. So let's check it out. Underneath your two uh, main benches here, if you tip these up, you're going to find two panels. You're going to find a smaller panel and a larger panel. Uh, these are going to be the filler panels for making your bed. Each one has, uh, they have channels cut, grooves cut, things like that in them. These correspond for the storing and these two correspond for how it's going to fit in back here. So you'll see there's two corresponding notches cut onto the framework back here. And that's going to be how that one sits in. Now for the larger one, this one also doubles as your tabletop. So it's got a whole lot of notches cut in it, uh, a lot more than the little one, yeah, but it works the same way. It's gonna correspond with how things fit. And it just drops in like there, locks in nice and tight, and then you just position your cushions to fill in and make your bedding area. So to store everything, it's just the reverse, take them off. Remember your notches have to match up on here. And you'll see the two here and one here need to match here, two here and one there, just like that. Now to use your tabletop, there's one more storage area back here in the back on the off door side of the trailer. This larger compartment pulls out 
and here is you're going to be your table bar or your table support just pull it off and to put that in place this big plastic screwed on in it's going to go to the floor and all you're going to do is turn it until it's snug no need to over tighten it once it's there in place take your tabletop slide it down on all the way down and that's it you'll see that it locks in place for coming off but you can freely turn this to kind of have it however you would like for comfort oh, it's hot in here. all right when you are done and you're ready to store all this this little lever right here is going to allow you to release the tabletop from the post so just push that in lift up on the tabletop to get the post off the floor there's a little button right here it's really easy if you just Sorry. Wasn't fast <laughs> Sorry. You ready? Good. So to get this post off the floor, there's a little black button right here. It's really easy. If you just put your foot on top of it, it allows you to unlock this post and unscrew it from the floor. When you get your post undone, grab your big storage vent lid out of the back, snap the post back onto it, and it goes right here. And underneath, you can store all kinds of goodies in there because it's a pretty big compartment. And our tabletop is going to go back on this side. And remember that these are all cut to fit in certain areas, so all your notches have to line up. Just like that. All right, and then last thing that we've got back here, access to our rear door that we can do, just open it up, push, and it'll open on up. If you wanna close it, you're just gonna use this strap, pull it, grab it, and shut it. This red lever right here is gonna be a deadbolt lock, so you can lock this from the inside, and nobody can get in from the outside. All of your windows in this unit operate the same way. They all have the same shade operation. So I'm just going to cover this one, but they all do the same thing. It's a very simple process. Just turn your levers, push your window out to wherever you would like it, and use these little lock knobs and lock it down. That's going to keep the window from closing. And that's it. When you want to close it, just undo your lock knobs, grab your window, and let it in. These have a kind of a, a two two positions here this this inner slot right here if you close the window just enough and put that latch in there that's going to allow just enough ventilation for this window to be held open it's great for when it's like maybe raining outside but you still want some fresh air and no water is going to get in to close it just pull it all the way shut and latch your corners to operate your shade you've got a day and a night shade bottom shade is going to be your day shade it's going to be more of like a bug screen type material if you push this all the way up it's going to latch onto this clip if you want to release it just slightly pull out on that clip and push it down and if you want your uh, nightshade it's going to be the heavy duty one and if you want to release it just slightly pull that clip up and push it up and that covers your uh, window and shade operation and last couple things we've got a uh, light back here with a button on it to turn it on and off just push the button on it um, and then there's another one that operates the same way up in the uh, bunk area and one last thing that I did forget there's a little cubby back here in this corner that has a uh, USB outlet in it USB port in it there for uh, plugging in and charging devices you know while you're laying in bed relaxing So I think the last couple things that we need to cover on your Mantis are going to be your um, expandable roof and, of course, your smoke detector. Need to have a smoke detector. Make sure you check it periodically for proper operation and replace your 9-volt battery, you know, at least once a year in it and make sure it continues to operate correctly. On your windows on here, there's either going to be a screen or it's going to be the uh, solid panel. This works a lot like a tent. You unzip it, you roll it down, and it bungees in place with these little uh, bungee and, and hooks right here. If you're going to put it away, just undo these. 
unroll it, and zip it up. All right, and now to get your roof down, it's got two straps here. This takes a little bit of oomph because uh, this roof is heavy. It does have some pretty serious struts on it. Grab both of them and give it a good pull. And you might want to put a little body weight in it, make it a little easier because you're going to want to shrink down anyway so you don't hit your head. Once you get this all the way down, you're going to have a latch on each side. You'll see these red latches. There's one here by the fire extinguisher and one on the other side. Make sure your canvas is back out of the way. Pull that latch up and get it to look, uh, hook into that D loop there. Once you're hooked, push the latch down and then push in on this and all the way to the wall until it's latched in place. Do that on both sides before you travel. If you want to pop it up, it's just the opposite. Push that little lever there, pull out and get the hook to release from the D and give it a push. Once it's about halfway up, the struts will take over and extend it the rest of the way. And I think that covers the inside of your 2020 Manus, but if you do have any questions, always reach out to Princess Craft RV or check it out online.